myself for a while. I understand. I knew you would. No matter what happens, I want you to know I'll always care for you. I know. It's all wrong. I feel like I should be having breakfast. <laughs> Probably take a couple of days to get used to it. I'm usually not too bad. Oh, we've got another swag of acceptances today. Melbourne's going to be booked out. How many Melbourneites are turning up? Oh, mainly just family and a few of Rob's old school friends. Not a lot compared to the mob from Sydney. Been thinking. It'd probably make more sense to uh, have the wedding up here. Too late to change now. I don't reckon David and Beryl would mind. Are you serious? Hmm. You mean getting at him, Mother? No, no, it's my idea. I know your father's feeling left out. He could get more involved if it was up here. Might make him a bit happier. Oh, he's OK now. That's uh, not what you said this afternoon when we were planning on clearing out. Well, things have changed a lot since then. Mother's back now. She can handle Daddy. I'm not saying she can't. I just think you should think of him a bit more. He's done a lot for you over the years. I promised David and Beryl they could give me the wedding. Unless they tell me they want to have it up here, the arrangements stand. OK. How about getting on the phone to them? Well, why change your mind now, with only a week or so to go? Angela's right. This suggestion ought to come from David and Beryl without our asking. Could be a lot of ill feeling otherwise. No, if you say so. Stop worrying. I'll find some way to get Daddy involved. Now, come on, drink up, or we'll never make the movie. Oh, they must have the best pizzas in Sydney. Yeah, it was great. Planny's probably starving. <laughs> well, thanks for a beaut day. Not asking me in for coffee. You should get back and see Patricia. She's probably asleep. Well, you never know. The way she was flaked out on the couch when we left. Thanks for a beaut night. You're really scared of giving it a go, aren't you? I just don't want to. That why you asked Paul to the picnic tomorrow? Well, I thought he could do with the company. If you're not careful, he'll get the wrong idea. Then I'll tell him the same thing I told you. Good night. I'm not sure I'm doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. I don't like lying to the Hamiltons. Little white ones never hurt anyone. It seems sort of underhand. They're not going to think much of me when they find out. But the sort of money you've got, who cares what they think? I suppose that sounded awful. Mm, a bit. Oh, I didn't mean it to come out that way. <laughs> By a crazy fluke. You've got the perfect chance to, to make up your mind about Patricia. Now she's back, that won't take too long. You really expect me not to like her, don't you? I'd be surprised if you did. Still, your grandfather got me into this, you know. He was a funny guy. Huh? A cross between a big businessman and an overgrown kid. <laughs> His games room. Yeah, I couldn't believe it when I first saw it. Everything from snakes and ladders to backgammon. It seemed funny at his age. Oh, the pressure he worked under, I, I think it was his way of letting off steam. I loved going in there. We played chess for hours. It worries me, you know. Hmm? I don't think I can handle that sort of pressure. The business thing. It's what he wanted. Yeah, I know. So that's the one o'clock flight, then? Good. Well, I'll pick up the tickets at the airport. Thank you. Oh, I was hoping you'd be gone. I'll go when Mr. Hamilton tells me to. Have to see what we can arrange, won't we? He chooses you over Mrs. Armstrong. He needs his head red. Do I look worried? No, it's me. How did it all go? Finished. Oh, are you, Rosie? 
How do you reckon? It went disastrously on the whole. Sticking with Barbara, is he? Mm, you're probably discussing it right now. What's the problem? The money? Wombai? All of them. He wants to make sure he's going to be happy with me. Mm. And to smile sweetly at my future son-in-law doesn't help matters any. Are you really going to let that happen? Well, there's no way of stopping it. You know your sister, still. It won't last long, and divorces are very simple to get these days. You still have to put up with him till then, unless they live in Melbourne. Oh, they'll live here. They're going to get married here. I thought that was all sorted out. I'm going down to Melbourne tomorrow to make sure it's changed. It's a practical way of showing Gordon that I care. What are you going to do? Play it by ear when I get there. Well, if they dig their hills in. I won't give them a chance to. Morning. You're the first to surface. Couldn't sleep. I waited up for you last night. Must have come in very late. About two. Sat in the car for hours. Thought. said something about us when we busted up over David. Put it in a nutshell, really. I can deny it until I'm blue in the face, but I love you. Always will. If she knew that, she shouldn't have tried to take you away from me. It wasn't like that. I believe you about James. As far as Mumbai goes. We were trying to make things work before you went away. I can only see how we go. You ought to give it a chance. And Barbara? I told her last night it's best if I don't see her again. I think we should tell the children after breakfast. I know they've been worried. Ooh, I thought arranging things for Kevin and Lynn's wedding was a bother. You should be an old hand at it by now. Three in the one year. Would have made it a lot easier if they'd all happened at once. It'd be funny if Angela had a kid straight off. It'd be a hat trick there, too. Well, you never know. Well. I'd like to do something different with it, Kate. Susan and Lynn's were very much alike. Yeah, and you should get someone else to fix it. Give you more time with other things. No. It's the only personal contribution I can make. Since the dress is being done in Sydney. Well, don't you go tiring yourself out. Susie told me you still have your bad days. Don't be an old fuss pot. I like worrying about you. Mm. I'll be okay. Susan and Lynn are healthy. I gave them a list of the uh, acceptances and they're doing the seating arrangement. Oh, good on them. <laughs> as long as they don't put Fiona and Patricia together. Oh, I don't know. We could do with the full show. <laughs> <laughs> must be costing Dad a fortune. Yeah, it must be. I know how much my dad paid for ours, and there weren't anywhere near as many guests. What are we going to do with Mr. Hamilton? I suppose he should go at the bridal table. <sighs> it's going to be crazy, you know. Well, there'll be three sets of parents. Nan and Pop for Rob, and then Mr. and Mrs. Hamilton and your mum and dad for Angela. Maybe we should leave Mum and Mr. Hamilton off. Put Dad and Mrs. Hamilton next to one another. What? How bad is it going to make Mum feel? It's going to look funny the other way, Kev. It's going to look a lot worse with Dad sitting up next to her. Look, Rob needs his head red anyway. Getting married. We need some milk. Get a paper while you're down there. Problem, isn't it? Hey, come on, it was just a stupid crack. He's sorry we ever got married. Well, don't expect any sympathy from me. You started it with the Donna business, thinking he was playing around. Well, it's him who's... I know he kept it going, but you did start it. I think it's up to you to make the first move, and I reckon the sooner you do it, the better. What's the point of holding a grudge? I knew when I went away that I was leaving behind a fairly shaky situation. I 
don't blame your father for being disappointed in me. Still, at the time I was too disturbed to cope with it. We're not kidding ourselves that it's going to be easy. Just hope that you're all going to help us, that's all. We wanted to include you in it, Rob. You're almost family. And at least our financial worries are over. I'll be able to give you whatever help you want, and only the help you want. That's it, I suppose. I'm glad, Mummy. Thank you, darling. I love you. Of course, I'm glad. No arguments from me. Good. We can all get down to being a family again. I've got all my personal problems sorted out. I think we should have a chat before I go to Melbourne. What time are you leaving? Now, in a couple of hours. I'll come straight over. Is that right by you? Of course. I'm a board member. Nothing suspicious in you wanting to talk to me. <laughs> See you soon, then. Fine. I wonder where you got to. Called Hal Mason. He's coming over to fill me in on how things are going. Told you about my job yet? Yes. You've done very well in a short time. Likes the fact I can keep my mouth shut. I hope you can. He's obviously told you a great deal. All about the transport thing, and where you really were when you said you were in Honolulu. I think it's good you've got all the money now. Dad never was much of a businessman. Too honest. So you're prepared to go along with everything? Hal seems happy with me so far. I hope you will be too. So do I. Can't figure it out. Why bother with Dad at all? You've got plenty of money now. You're getting on with everyone. I know you don't love him. You wouldn't be going through all the rigmarole with David Palmer's company. You weren't still keen on him. I'm not doing it to help David. You'll see. But you don't love Dad, though, do you? I want my family around me. Your father's part of that. It's going to be a bit hard, isn't it? Faking it. I don't dislike him. I'll manage. Is it really worth it, just to keep Angie and John around? I think so. Poor old Gordy. He'd probably be a hell of a lot happier with Barbara Armstrong. There's no way she's going to get him. If you ever decide to use the things you know against me, don't bother hanging around to explain. I'm not that stupid. Hal Mason will be over very shortly. He has some business to discuss with me. Fine. Thought I ought to uh, get it out of the way before I went to Melbourne. I prefer you didn't go. Darling, I'm doing it for you. I don't like the idea of you asking David Palmer for favours. Well, I'm not. He just doesn't understand the situation, that's all. Rob's quite keen to have the wedding here, and Angela would be too, if Beryl and David would give the go-ahead. I think he should know that. Angela would be angry if she thought you were interfering. As far as the kids are concerned, I'm going down to Melbourne on business. I've done a lot of things to hurt you. Let me start doing a few things to make up for it. All right. Thanks. Sticky beak. Oh, that's your trouble. Oh, hi. Hi. Have you got any milk to spare? Oh, yeah, I think so. Supplies for the picnic. Mm, plenty. Oh, look, open the door now, would you? <laughs> I've just been cleaning out upstairs. They didn't do a very good job when they left. What did Thel want? Bunty and Thel. Can't wait to know who the new tenant is. Oh, have you got anyone lined up? Yeah, well, Di Miller's coming to have a look around for... <sighs> Di Miller, from Ramberg. Oh, she said I got glowing references from John and Wayne. Wayne? Mm-hmm, that's what I thought. Must have been in a good mood. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought Di Miller would be interested in a bed sit. 
She must make heaps of money. Well, I told her how small it is, but she still seemed keen. Are you all ready for the picnic? Mm, the quiche is in the oven. Everything else is ready to go. Ah, you're very popular these days. Paul and John. Both just friends. <laughs> you try telling Bunty and Thel that. Now, Thel was grilling me about your love life, oh, too. Oh, you'd think they'd have better things to do. Oh, you know them. <laughs> uh, I'm very glad that you included Paul today. He could do with the company. Mm. John thinks I only invited him, so he doesn't try anything. <laughs> oh, <poor> Johnny. <laughs> You've got to give him top marks for persistence. Mm. Uh, you didn't tell him that Paul knows me. Oh, no, Paul asked me not to say anything. <laughs> He's as bad as John was when he first turned up. Hmm? Well, not saying anything about himself. Oh. I hope he's not on the run from the police, too. <laughs> Nothing so exotic. But there is something. You know me. <laughs> Best secret keeper in the world. Paul obviously didn't want to be found. He called in from Arizona. They told him that his grandfather had died. He just hung up. Did they let him know you were waiting to see him? He said he'd prefer to get over the death alone and thanked me for my concern. I gather he didn't know about your relationship with James. No. Hmm. Probably thought you were sent by Ramberg then. I gather he's not too keen in getting involved in the business, not from a few things James said. So, all in all, it was a total waste of time. Well, you knew that was a possibility. There's just one thing I have to make sure of if he does turn up. I spend more time with him than Fiona. I wish James had been a bit more open about him. What caused the problems between them towards the end? Well, that's what I mean. He didn't say. Oh, I know he still loved the kid, but something went haywire about two years ago. But he didn't tell me before he died. <laughs> it certainly is. Would have given us the edge we need over Fiona. Having troubles? Oh, I hope you haven't saw me a dud. Yeah, you might have overchoked it. Give us a go. Magic touch. Not going to do that to me. No refunds. Oh, thanks. See you later. See you. Better hurry or you'll miss your plane. We'll talk about it later in the week. Sounded like you were having some trouble. Yeah, I was. It's identical to Jill's. Well, she's made hers very comfortable. It's nice. You sure it's not too perky? Well, home's just a place to sleep for me. I spend most of my time at work. Oh, it'd be a bit of a squeeze if you've got much furniture. I'll sell a lot of it off. One person on their own, that's all they need. Oh. I, uh, I like to spread out. <laughs> well, I'm happy if you are. Oh, fine. It's a deal. Oh, I must warn you, the, um... The two old chooks across the corridor. They'll want to know all your business. It's the only drawback. I've got nothing to hide. Good. Let's have a drink on it. Um, I really should be going. I've got a whole stack of files to collate by tomorrow morning. Sounds like you work too hard. Pays the bills. Oh, come on. Just one. The others will be back from the picnic soon. All right. Just one. Good. Come on. The glasses are down here. It's oh, great. You've gone a fair while. Well, that was my fault. I wouldn't let him stop. I should have got one of those instead of my car. Oh, what a beautiful afternoon. Yeah. It's getting a bit late. We better get cleared up, eh? Right. Oh, and thanks for the ride. I loved it. Anytime. <laughs> Come on, lazy bones, give us a hand. Bring some rubbish, eh? Nice chance. 
he's not doing anything. You've seen how he's been all day. He'll probably just start another argument. Not if you do it right. Go on. I'll give you a game. I haven't finished this one yet. I'll give you one when you have them. I'm trying to say I'm sorry. Me too. You, uh, don't really wish we weren't married, do you? I have the past few days. You know what really got to me? I know you're not feeling too good with the baby and all. It worries me too. And us being tied down so young, it's only part of it. With Donna and me. You thought I was doing the same thing the old man did. You know how I feel about him and, and John's mum? But you still thought I'd do it. That made me feel pretty rotten. I'm sorry. I love you. I'd never do that to you. Could you get that, please, David? I'm up to my elbows and flour. Thank you, thank you. Hello, David. What can I do for you, Pam? I've come about the wedding. There are a few problems I'd like to iron out. I don't see there are any problems. Oh, there won't be. Not if you're reasonable. Strange. Crikey, David answered the door. That Beryl's so lazy. Jessica from Stevenage is intrigued by Paul Shepard. Where has he been? He seems so soft, but that comment he made to Jill the other day about where I've been kind of implied that he's been in prison. Ah, Jessica, keep watching. I'm giving nothing away. Mind you, he wouldn't have lasted five minutes in jail in that pink leather jacket. Elaine Burtonshaw from St. Anne's, thanks for your letter. What woman wouldn't be jealous to know that you have a goblin tease made just like Lynn and Kevin's. Do you have the TV game, though? She put me right about Carrie's triplets in Shortland Street, but hey, let's not get into that. That's ITV's job. Job ideas for Wayne, Will Stafford. Hiya, Will. Thinks Hal Mason sends him out to all the men's hairdressing salons to gather cheesy display photos so that Di has something to put on her desk in lieu of paperwork. Page 391 of 5 Text if you want to play.